Massey Show. And here's your host, Chris Massey. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Massey and welcome to the very first episode of the Chris Massey Music Show here on the American Hearts Radio Network. We're coming to you live tonight from our beautiful studio here in downtown Atlanta. Now for those of you that don't know me, I've been around the Atlanta music scene for over 30 years. Played my first gig way back in 1980 at the Old Agora Ballroom. At the time I was a mere 18 years old and I was lead singer for a group called The Mistakes. Over the years, I've played in a lot of blues and rock and roll bands. In the last four years, I've fronted my own group, the Chris Massey Band. We're a country rock act. We've got a couple of albums out. Played up and down the East Coast. We're in Atlanta all the time. And on May 29th, we're heading out west for a nine-city tour that's going to take us to Las Vegas, Nevada, and Los Angeles, California. Now, what the Chris Massey Show is, it's basically a talk show. And on the third Monday of every month, I'll be here interviewing guests from the entertainment industry right here in Atlanta. There's so many cool people in this town that have done and are doing extraordinary things that people outside the scene don't know anything about. So every show, I hope to bring you some new information, some live music, and who knows, maybe even a little bit of comedy. So here's what you can expect to find here. Musicians, actors, artists, dancers, people that run recording studios, nightclub owners, anybody that has anything to do with the entertainment industry, you can find right here on the Chris Massey Music Show. Now, I know right now some of you are staring into your computer, and the thought that's going through your head is this. How in the hell did Chris Massey get his own web TV show? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you got to be in the right place at the right time, and it also doesn't hurt to have some compromising photos of the people that are in charge. You know what they say, ain't no business like show business like no business I know. We got a great show for you tonight. Attorney and saxophonist Johnny Hibbert is here. Singer-songwriter Cindy Lou Harrington. Blues guitarist Johnny Scales. And an episode of How Is That Possible with Muhammad Azar and Rachel Jordan. So get a beer, relax, stick around. Chances are you're going to be okay for the next 30 minutes. We'll be right back. Serving Atlanta since 1998, Massey Gutters understands the challenges specific to our area. Massey Gutters is familiar with all aspects of gutters and roofing. We use only the highest quality materials with our fully trained and professional staff. You are guaranteed to get quality service and work. References available upon request. Call us today for a free estimate, 404-314-6800. Again, that's 404-314-6800. Call Massey Gutters today. 404-314-6800. Okay, we're back. My first guest tonight knows virtually everybody in the Atlanta music scene, or should I say everybody knows him. He has a reputation around town of being an excellent lawyer and a fine saxophone player, and everybody that knows him will tell you the same thing. He's a hell of a guy. Would you please welcome Mr. Johnny Hibbert. Mr. Hibbert, have a seat, sir. Good to have you on the show. Good to be here. All right, all right. Now, Johnny, I have to say, um, most musicians I know in Atlanta, and really most musicians anywhere, have a day gig. It's a really tough industry to make a living in, and even tougher to make a really good living in. And But most of us can't say that our day gig is that we're an attorney. So I want you to tell me how it is that you had enough time in your youth to go to law school and get a law degree and become a lawyer and learn to play the saxophone like you did. Here's the secret. It, it wasn't in my youth. Um, I, I played in, in lots of bands, uh, as you did, um, knocking around in, in my early adulthood. And, um, and I, I, I was out there on, on the road traveling with, uh, well, Daryl Rhodes and the Haha Ha Vishnu Orchestra, for one, and uh, 
my brother and I had a band called the Incredible Throbs, and and also um, uh, Edward Tanner and I uh, formed a group that went on to play five million fraternity gigs all over the the southeast uh, called the Dynamic Atlanta Cruisomatic. Cruisomatic, yes, yeah. I'm familiar and, with that. And so and so. Um, it, as as time wore on, I I started I I, I started thinking you know I, I kind of want to plant some roots and and what a, what a crazy idea, um, but I I, uh, I I dropped out of uh, traveling with bands and playing with bands a little bit and went to law school and oh. and so that was that was like twelve years after college and went back. To law school, and it's been it's been very interesting. What's ironic is that uh, 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 about uh, the more law I, I practiced, the the more I I got to missing playing music. So uh, getting out and playing on on uh, on studio sessions with guys like you, and and playing with Daryl. I still play with uh, Daryl these days, and and uh, that's. That's made it really, really nice. So, I, in, in a way, I have my cake and eat it, too. There you go. You hear that, all you young musicians out there? Your parents are griping at you about playing. You go to law school, become a lawyer, and they won't say a word to you. <laughs> won't do it. Now, um, there's a... There's been some big events in Atlanta in the, in the music history of this town, and you are directly linked to two of them that I know about. One of them is, is that on uh, January the 5th, 1978, at the old Great Southeast Music Hall... These blokes from England had come to America for their first gig in our country. And, of course, I'm talking about the Sex Pistols, and you guys were the opening act. Yeah, that was, that was a crazy night. It was, uh, it was kind of an amazing, it was, it was like my first encounter with, with overhype. And the, the, at the time, all the television was just really three networks. Right. And, and they were all there in force, and... and uh, here was this band called the Sex Pistols, and so you know everybody was uh, uh, all all um, all abuzz with the the excitement of it, and and it was probably a little bit of of fear in uh, in some of the folks uh, out there in Atlanta. So, <laughs> but we we managed to we managed to get um, get a, a spot opening up for them. We had a real good time. Now, were the Sex Pistols off limits, or did you guys mingle with these guys? Well, <laughs> at the Great Southeast Music Hall, there was there was only one dressing room. So, oh, okay. So we we de <laughs> we definitely mingled. The, uh, the dressing room had a sort of a uh, an open area, and then there were a couple of, couple of closets where you could duck in and and, uh, and and go through a complete change of clothes with without <laughs> losing too much of your dignity. But um, but sharing a dressing room uh, with those guys was was a, a quick way to lose all your dignity. I'm sure. But I'm sure. They were they were a lot of fun. Now I want to move uh, I want to move forward a little bit to the early '80s and um, you uh, formed this uh, record label, local record label called Hip Tone Records. And uh, one of the first acts, I know you uh, later had uh, RF and the Radar Angels were on Hip Tone Records, That's very right. fine band from the 80s. And you also uh, signed these guys named uh, R.E.M. Oh, yeah. On, oh, on yeah. Hip Tone Records. A big story there, gosh. Um, yeah, um, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was getting ready to go to law school, and a couple of, uh, couple of the, the camp followers of the Incredible Throbs uh, contacted me and, and said, uh, well, before you go drifting off into obscurity, we, we want to make a record, you know, of you. And I said, well, let me think about that. And I went back to him. And I said, guys, I, I'm, I'm not going to be out there supporting a record. I'm going to be going to school. Um, so why don't we... If you really want to do some music, why don't we find a band that's that's really out there tearing it up and and uh, and do a record on them? Cool. And um, and so uh, that was that was Cliff and Doug Danielson, and um, and I'm ever grateful for them for 
for jumping in with me and they they said okay great and so we um we went looking and i asked a friend of mine uh, i asked a friend of mine kim kim shockley uh, now is uh, kim shockley carrollson and uh she was going to school up in Athens. I said, who, who is really, really doing it? And who's, who's drawing the crowds? And who, who does everybody love to dance to? And she said, oh, you've got to come up and hear R.E.M. So I, I, I went up and heard R.E.M. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was at the 40 Watt. And um, I didn't really say anything about it. And I didn't approach them at that time. Uh, I wanted to... to give it time to sink in a little bit so I then I went and uh, I went back uh, to hear them again and that night I talked with them and and they were uh, I was surprised they were very very friendly very very receptive and uh, they they even went so far as to say well, well that might be really cool uh, we we used to come here you play and um, I remember uh, I remember Peter Buck was uh, was writing for the Emory Wheel, uh, mm -hmm. I believe it, Emory Paper, and and called me in to do an interview with me one, one oh, okay. to sort of get my take on things. But anyway, that was that was that, and we proceeded to we proceeded to to do a uh, do overdubs and and backing vocals and some uh some extra parts and and up at uh, mitch's drive-in studio in winston-salem yeah. north carolina and uh, now this is the single this is a single that had a yeah, radio free europe and sitting still and it was getting played all over the country on college radio and it's what they use to land their big record deal so rem i know you guys are watching tonight michael <laughs> mike Pete and Bill, you know, if it wasn't for this guy, you'd be like the rest of us, in your 50s and playing for peanuts. Oh, Instead, you got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Johnny Hibbert, thank you so much. Oh, it's great to be here, Chris. You'll have to come back and send right. me my friend. Johnny we'll Hibbert, everybody. Johnny Hibbert. <laughs>
Why would it be necessary to lock up the deodorant? How is that possible? Well, Amanda, that is a very good question. I, too, am a Midtown Atlanta resident and have been in the drugstore you're referring to many times. I have also noticed that the deodorants and antidepressants are locked up under lock and key. After doing lots of investigating and talking to many reliable sources, what I have found out is this. It is bullshit. No one is stealing the deodorant. Someone is taking it and they are selling it on the black market. What are you talking about? What do you mean? There's no black market for deodorant. It costs next to nothing and you can buy it almost anywhere. That is true, but in America everyone like a bargain. We're talking about deodorant. What do you think? These people have their own personal deodorant dealers selling it to them, to them illegally just so they can save a dollar? But everyone like a bargain. Take you, for instance. You are in a parking lot. A man with a briefcase approach you. He opened the briefcase. He have a lot of deodorant products at discount price. You not buy? I am not buying deodorant from some guy in a parking lot. What's wrong with you? In your whole life, has anyone ever approached you in a parking lot to try to sell you deodorant? Hmm. Well, no. But when was the last time you were next to a homeless person who smelled like a bar of allspice? Look, this is exactly what we were talking about before the show. You cannot be making up crap and just saying it on TV. I speak the fact! Look, as much as I hate to say it, in all probability, the homeless people are responsible for the missing deodorant. Hmm. No black market? No. No personal deodorant dealer? No! Maybe you're right. And if you are, that would surely explain how is that possible? Miss Rachel Jordan, everyone! Rachel Jordan! When we come back, we have singer-songwriter Miss Cindy Lou Harrington. American Hearts Radio wants you to be a part of our family. Affordable rates, live worldwide radio broadcasts, live events and web TV show productions. Tune in, you'll like what you hear. Download our apps from Nobex for Android and Blackberry. We also have apps for Android on Google Play. It's also available on the iPhone and iPad stores. We honor our U.S. troops, veterans, first responders, MIAs, and POWs. We are family-oriented, bringing the hearts of America together by streaming live radio and web TV shows from coast to coast, supporting independent artists, and spinning timeless music. We will create commercials for your business that will be placed on live radio shows and web TV daily spins and reruns, as well as creating the graphics that will appear on all social networks and our website. As a supporter of our... All right, we're back. And I'll tell you what, man, Muhammad Azar, he can come up with some crazy shit. My next guest is an award-winning singer-songwriter. She's played around the Atlanta area for two-plus decades. She has shared the stage with such bands as Sawyer Brown and the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. She has released five independent albums in her career. The last two were Rock My Country and an album she did with her two daughters entitled The Harringtons. Would you please welcome the lovely and talented Miss Cindy Lou Harrington. Cindy Lou. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. All right, um, Cindy Lou, we were we were talking uh, earlier, and I know a lot of things about you. I've read your bio, and it's very impressive, by the way. But uh, I didn't know that uh, you actually got your start on uh, at Six Flags. I did Six Flags over Georgia. Okay. All right. And um, so since then, and then you went on to a solo career. Is that correct? I did, but not immediately. I worked with a group, uh, Debbie Bass. And a touch of class. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, she was a local singer-songwriter, and uh, and we we toured a little bit. Uh, we our claim to fame is that the Supremes came to see us. Oh, excellent! Uh, because they'd heard about our harmonies and stuff. It was really kind of cool. Oh, okay. I mean, they you know like they were in the neighborhood. It wasn't. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. But it was a lot of fun. Lot now there's a right now there is a growing number of musicians, and, and I feel like you and I are both in this category. People that have been doing it for for quite some time. 
Um, they've never gotten that, that big break, that big record deal, but yet, uh, you know, we're still out here writing songs, playing shows, making records, going on the road. And um, I got to tell you, for me, I enjoy it more than I did 25 years ago. What, what is your take on that? I completely do. I don't know that the pressure's off in a way. Um, and, you know, I think that for me as a songwriter, uh, the challenge comes in getting in the studio, hearing something you've written uh, come to fruition. Uh, and lately, with my daughters in the studio with me, it's a whole new thing. I just, I just love it. Um, the harmonies, I go to uh, David Leonard's studio, Reveal Audio, um, mm -hmm. and um, he and I, he was actually in that band at Six Flags with me. He, oh, okay. He was 15 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we have collaborated a long time. It's like he can read my mind about what I want to do with harmonies or something out of the box there. Real proud of the latest record. I was going to, that's what I was hunting for, was a copy of that. Oh, okay. I had it over there somewhere, but uh, Life is a Song is the name of the record. All right. I'm real proud of it. Now, I have your fourth record, uh, Rock My Country, which okay. is a very good record. I have it in my truck, play it quite often. Cool. <laughs> and I think I've told you before um, that my favorite tune on there is a tune called Heartache. Um, oh, yeah. It's got this great Roy Orbison feel to it, and uh, the guitar on it is great, and you sing it beautifully. And um, I like Rock My Country and Winning Heart and a couple other tunes on there uh, I, do, I do like. But um, uh, right now, you have brought your guitar with you with us okay? tonight. Yeah, yeah, bring it on over All here. Right. And um, uh, Cindy Lou is going to do a song for us. Well, I could do Heartache if you'd like to hear it. Or and I always like to hear Heartache. Do you want to hear that one? That would be great. Cindy Lou Harrington. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, wrote this when I was in a pretty bad mood. <laughs> It's cool. 
with all this She great? Oh. That's right. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back with blues guitarist Johnny Scales. Serving Atlanta since 1998, Massey Gutters understands the challenges specific to our area. Massey Gutters is familiar with all aspects of gutters and roofing. We use only the highest quality materials with our fully trained and professional staff. You are guaranteed to get quality service and work. References available upon request. Call us today for a free estimate, 404-314-6800. Again, that's 404-314-6800. Call Massey Gutters today. 404-314-6800. All right, we're back. As being, for being a guest on the Chris Massey Show, my guest Johnny Hibbert, Cindy Lou Harrington, Rachel Jordan, and Johnny Scales will receive door prizes. We have for you a case of turtle wax and a six-month supply of rice a the San Francisco treat. When you leave the studio, just see Ray, the security guard, in the lobby, and he will set you up with your prize. And again, thank you for being on the show. My next guest and I go way back. We have worked on a lot of projects, songs, and shows. We've done a lot together over the years. He currently has his own band, the Johnny Scales Band. You can also catch him playing with the Voodoo Po' Boys, the Squirrel Heads, Two Foot Fro, and the Chris Massey Band. Would you please welcome Mr. Johnny Scales. Big job. Good to see you, brother. Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Great show you got tonight. Cindy Lou and the inimitable Johnny Hibbert. So tell me, Johnny, did you ever think you'd be on my TV show? Definitely not. Me neither. I never thought you'd be on my show either. I have to tell you. <laughs> but I, I am excited about the rice aroni because I just caught a mess of squirrels. Yeah, yeah. yeah the rice aroni like is good. Squirrels and rice aroni. You know, in that case, the turtle wax comes in hand because you can always get a job waxing cars at a car lot because that's about enough wax they give you to do that. Oh, so. and you spray that on their windshield, they'll pay you to get it off. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, Johnny, when I first saw you, uh, first met you way back, man, I want to say it was about 1986, and you were playing in a rock band called Dark Adventure. I had hair. And you had hair, and uh, and I did too, and we were both a little thinner that day, back in those days. Yeah. And you were just shredding it. I mean, Eddie Van Halen style, just blistering stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was right on for what you were doing. And then, you know, we played a little bit over the years, and then we lost touch for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, one night um, I caught you... Uh, playing uh, my music on the uh, internet when you weren't supposed to because I hadn't told you you could do it. You remember that? And um, uh, <laughs> Anyway, you showed up at the Blue Moose Tavern over in Stone Mountain with your mm -hmm. guitar and you got up and I was with a group called the Hellcats mm -hmm. and you played guitar that night and as soon as you hit it, I knew right then something had changed. You were playing completely different, mm -hmm. had a completely different sound and it was just mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that transformation from the... Uh, heavy rocker to the blues guy that you are now. Well, it wasn't necessarily blues. Uh, coming from the South, as you know, uh, South is a hotbed prior to REM, anyway. Right. Uh, of, uh, it's your fault, John. Of rhythm and blues <laughs> and soul music, which all of that basically comes out of gospel. Uh -huh. most, of the, most of the old school stuff that I love came out of that gospel background, and that gave it that feel. And I learned that uh, you could play a few chords with feel and make a whole lot more money than Eddie Van Halen, eruption solos. Correct. And that and tendonitis. Right, I remember the tendonitis. Predicated. 
a change in style. Now, you also played a number of years with the great Lots of Papa, yes. one of the best, best blues singers to ever get behind yes. the microphone almost, in Atlanta. Almost a decade, yeah. And uh, and I think he told you one night after a show that he didn't pay you by the note or no, something like that. Right. Is that what he said? That's right. <laughs> and you got mad and quit, right? No, no, I didn't get mad and quit. I didn't get mad. Not about that. <laughs> That's a whole other show. We can have the Lots of Papa show a different oh, Okay, time. all right. I got you. But lots of Papa, uh, no, he did help me understand a lot about dynamics, mm -hmm. most importantly, and tone. Yes, you are known as the tone master. Yeah. I'll have to tell you that. Everybody and that talks about you, when they get through the stuff they don't like about you, they always yeah. mention that you're exactly. the tone master well, on, you know, on, on stage. I, give I, the devil his I, due. I, I've, I've been in some of those conversations, yeah. Yeah, you do. You so do that. uh, that's, I learned that you could play three notes with a whole lot of tone, and save the rest for the for the after party. Well, and I have been the beneficiary of some of this guitar stuff that uh, that you learned. Uh, Johnny played guitar and produced my first record, Heartbreak mm -hmm. Avenue, which uh, landed me to meeting Mr. Johnny Hibbert and doing some stuff with him. Mm -hmm. And then you played guitar on my second album, uh, Cowboy Heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to be doing some shows with the Chris Massey Band coming up here this summer. I think yes. I got you booked for three or four. Three or four June. gigs to do with us. Uh, yeah, and one in May. We're going to be at the uh, yeah. Perk Avenue yeah. in Madison, Georgia. We're exactly. going to we're going to be there. Going to be there with me. Looking forward to that. So, uh, so anyway, John, I think uh, you know since this is my first show, that uh, you and I are going to have a drink here, and okay. we're going to we're going to toast the show. Okay, is that okay with you? That's that's fine. Is with that me. okay with you, Al? Yeah, okay. Al over here, engineering man. He's doing. Yeah, he's, he's doing props it. for Al. He's, he's been a, making it making it look right his, all uh, night. Super tonight. job and. I couldn't yes, afford indeed. the Jack Daniels, so we're going to have to go with the other one. There's your little here. Got a bow. I appreciate that. That's no problem. That is no <laughs> problem. That's a, mighty, that's a mighty good pour you got there, my friend. Well, it's a big drink because it's going to be a big show. I mean, I, that, that, that's all I can tell you. So let's have a little toast here to the Chris Massey Show. There we go. Bottoms up, my friend. Mmm. <laughs> Uh, oh, good Lord. Show's over, folks. <laughs> Just make sure I get my rice aroni. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> good Lord. Oh. oh, my God. Johnny, you know he's not supposed to be drinking. Chris, oh Chris, wake up. You got to finish the show. <laughs> Where am I? Web TV. That's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank my guests, Mr. Johnny Hibbert, Cindy Lou Harrington, Johnny Scales, Muhammad Azar, and Rachel Jordan. Join me back here on May 19th when my guests will be Tim Olivar, country singer Joe Hall, and lead rocker for the Western Sizzlers, Mr. Kevin Jennings. Until that time, always remember, love your woman, take life as it comes, and when you get the chance, have too much fun. We'll see you next time. American Hearts Radio wants you to be a part of our family. Affordable rates, live worldwide radio broadcasts, live events and web TV show productions. Tune in, you'll like what you hear. Download our apps from Nobex for Android and Blackberry. We also have apps for Android on Google Play. It's also available on the iPhone and iPad stores. We honor our U.S. troops, veterans, first responders, MIAs, and POWs. We are family-oriented, bringing the hearts of America together by streaming live radio and web TV shows from coast to coast, supporting independent artists, and spinning timeless music. We will create commercials for your business that will be placed on live radio shows and web TV daily spins and reruns, as well as creating the graphics that will appear on all social networks and our website. As a supporter of our radio web TV network, you will be invited on our local web TV shows in Atlanta, Georgia to promote your business. You will also receive free tickets to any other live event that American Hearts Radio LLC produces. In comparison to traditional advertising, our rates are very affordable and offer a larger audience. 
Every client's advertising plan should include a way to drive potential buyers to your website. And AmericanHeartsRadio.com does exactly that. Be a part of our family bringing the hearts of America together. Please contact us. We thank you for your support. Become a part of our family of supporters today. Call 904-229-8150. That's 904-229-8150. Call today at 904-229-8150. Please visit us at www.americanheartsradio.com. 